Sura 112. Alec Loss. Context. Period of Revelation. Whether it is a Meccan or a Medinan Sura is disputed, and the difference of opinion has been caused by the traditions which have been related concerning the occasion of its revelation. Some of them have been mentioned as follows. Number 1. Abdullah bin Masood, has reported that the Quraysh said to the Prophet, Tell us of the ancestry of your Lord. Thereupon this surah was sent down. As narrated by Tabrani. Number 2. Abu Lalia, has related on the authority of Ubay bin Qab, that the polytheists said to the Prophet, Tell us of your Lord's ancestry. Thereupon God sent down this surah. As narrated by, Musnad Ahmed, Ibn Abi Harim, Ibn Jarir, Tirmizi, Buhari, Inatari, Ibn al-Munzer, Hakim, and Waihaki. Tirmizi has related a tradition on the same theme from Abu Lalia, which does not contain any reference to Ubay ibn Qab, and has declared it to be more authentic. Number 3. Jabr bin Abdullah, has stated that a Bedouin, according to other traditions, some people, said to the Prophet, Tell us of your Lord's ancestry. Thereupon God sent down this surah, as narrated by, Abu Yala, Ibn Jarir, Ibn al-Munzer, Tabrani, in al-Ausat, by Haki, Abu Noam, in al hilia Number 4. Ikrima, has related a tradition from Ibn Abbas, saying that a group of the Jews, including Kaab bin Ashraf, Huyai bin Aktab, and others came before the Prophet and said, O Muhammad, tell us of the attributes of your Lord, who has sent you as a Prophet. Thereupon God sent down this surah, as narrated by, Ibn Abi Hatim, Ibn Adi, by Haki, in al iss Ma, Wasit Fat. In addition to these, some other traditions also have been cited by Ibn Taymiyyah, in his commentary of this surah, which are as follows. These traditions show, that different people on different occasions had questioned the Prophet about the essence and nature of the God, to whose service and worship he invited the people, and on every occasion, he recited by God's command this very surah in response. First of all, the pagans of Quraysh asked him this question in Mecca, and in reply, this surah was sent down. Then, at Medina, sometimes the Christians, and sometimes the other people of Arabia, asked him questions of this nature, and every time God inspired him to recite this very surah in answer to them. In each of these traditions, it has been said that this surah was revealed on this or that occasion. From this, one should not form the impression that all these traditions are mutually contradictory. The fact is, that whenever there existed with the Prophet a verse or a surah previously revealed in respect of a particular question or matter, and later the same question was presented before him, God inspired him to recite the same verse, or surah to the people as it contained the answer to their question. The reporters of Hadith describe the same thing, saying, When such and such a question or matter was presented before the Prophet, such and such a verse or surah was revealed. This has also been described as repetition of revelation, meaning the revelation of a verse or surah several times. Thus, the fact is that this surah is Meccan. Rather in view of its subject matter, a surah revealed in the earliest period at Mecca, when detailed verses of the Quran dealing with the essence and attributes of God Almighty, had not yet been revealed, and the people hearing the Prophet's invitation to God, wanted to know what was his Lord like, to whose worship and service he was calling them. Another proof of this surah's being one of the earliest surahs to be revealed is that when in Mecca, Umayyah bin Khalaf, the master of Bilal, made him lie down on burning sand, and placed a heavy stone on his chest. Bilal used to cry Ahad, Ahad, this word was derived from this very surah. The theme and subject matter. A little consideration of the traditions regarding the occasion of the revelation of this surah, shows what were the religious concepts of the world. At the time the Prophet began to preach the message of monotheism. Tawheed. The idolatrous polytheists were worshipping gods made of wood, stone, gold, silver, 
and other substances. These gods had a form, shape, and body. The gods and goddesses were descended from each other. No goddess was without a husband, and no god without a wife. They stood in need of food and drink, and their devotees arranged these for them. A large number of the polytheists believed that God assumed human form, and there were some people who descended from him. Although the Christians claimed to believe in one God, yet their God also had at least a son, and besides the Father and Son, the Holy Ghost also had the honor of being an associate in lordship, so much so that God had a mother and a mother-in-law too. The Jews also claimed to believe in one God, but their God too was not without physical, material, and other human qualities and characteristics. He went for a stroll, appeared in human form, wrestled with a servant of his, and was father of a son, Ezra. Besides these religious communities, the Zoroastrianism were fire worshippers, and the Sabian star worshippers. Under such conditions when the people were invited to believe in God, the one, who has no associate, it was inevitable that questions arose in the minds, as to what kind of a God it was, who was the one and only Lord an invitation to believe in, whom was being given at the expense of all other gods and deities. It is a miracle of the Quran, that in a few words briefly, it answered all the questions and presented such a clear concept of the being of God, as destroyed all polytheistic concepts without leaving any room for the attribution of any of the human qualities to his being. The Merit and Importance of This Surah That is why the Messenger of God held this surah in great esteem, and he made the Muslims realize its importance in different ways, so that they recited it frequently and disseminated it among the people. For it states the foremost and fundamental doctrine of Islam. Monotheism in four such brief sentences, as are immediately impressed on human memory and can be read and recited easily. There are a great number of the traditions of Hadith, which show that the Prophet on different occasions and in different ways, told the people that this surah is equivalent to one-third of the Quran. Several Hadith on this subject have been related in Buhari, Muslim, Abu Dawood, Nasai, Tirmizi, Ibn Majah, Musnad Ahmed, Dabrani and other books, on the authority of Abu Sethudri, Abu Herrera, Abu Ayyub Ansari, Abu Abdarda, Muaz bin Jabal, Jabir bin Abdullah, Ubayy bin Qab, Um Kulthum bin Tukba bin Abi Mu'ath, Ibn Umar, Ibn Masud, Qatada bin Anuman, Anas bin Malik, and Abu Masud. May God be pleased with all of them. The commentators have given many explanations of the prophets saying this. But in our opinion it simply means, that the religion presented by the Quran is based on three doctrines. Monotheism, apostleship, and the hereafter. This surah teaches monotheism, pure and undefiled. Therefore, the prophet regarded it as equal to one-third of the Quran. A tradition on the authority of Aisha, has been related in Buhari. Muslim, and other collections of the Hadith, saying that the Prophet sent a man as leader of an expedition. During the journey, he concluded his recitation of the Quran in every prayer with Surah 112, Alec Loss. On their return, the companions mentioned this before the Prophet. He said, Ask him why he did so. When the man was asked, he replied, In this Surah, the attributes of the merciful God have been stated. Therefore, I love to recite it again and again. When the Prophet heard this reply, he said to the people, Inform him that God holds him in great love and esteem. A similar incident has been related in Buhari, on the authority of Anas. He says, A man from among the Ansar led the prayers in the Kuba Mosque. His practice was that in every rakah he first recited this surah and then would join another surah to it. The people objected to it and said to him, Don't you think that Surah Klaus is by itself enough? Why do you join another Surah to it? You should either recite only this Surah or should leave it and recite some other Surah. He said, I cannot leave it. I would rather give up leadership in the prayer if you so desired. 
the people did not approve that another man be appointed leader instead of him. At last, the matter was brought before the prophet. He asked the man, What prevents you from conceding what your companions desire? What makes you recite this particular surah in every rakah? The man replied, I have great love for it. The prophet remarked, Your love for this surah has earned you entry into paradise. Surah 112. Alec Loss. In the name of God, the most compassionate, the most merciful. Say, He is God, who is one. God, the self-sufficient. He neither begets, nor is born, nor is there to Him, any equivalent.